15 seconds. My name is uh, Peter Fortuna, and I'm from North Fresno Rotary. I'm one of the uh, chairs for social media in the district. And this is what I'm calling a recipe to kick up your social media posts and to share your information online. So just a quick thing about me. Um, I work at Fresno State. I'm an information uh, consultant. Um, I do desktop support. And I've just been reassigned to do web accessibility. So for hearing impaired, visually impaired, I can take all the websites and basically rewrite them in a way that when you visit, it, visit the website with different browsers, the computer can read to you and describe the pictures that you can't see or the audio that you can't hear. So one of the things that I noticed with a bunch of different groups I work with is they have no system in place to run their social media posts. There's usually like seven or eight people that have access to one account and then no one posts because they think the other person's gonna post too. So uh, in a lot of project management, business management, they talk about you know slogans and little diagrams and uh, visuals and infographics. One that I completely find useful is this three-pronged attack where we look at the tools that you have, uh, the processes, but it's all based on, on the people that you have. Because if you don't have a team, it can get kind of overwhelming um, and challenging. And if you don't have a team, then you don't have to learn to collaborate, right? You just do it the way you want to do it, post the one you want to post, and that kind of stuff. But as soon as you start to gain momentum and you want to start sharing more information, it's going to be hard for one person to do it especially if you have multiple people in the group actively trying to send you information or share information with you. So what I wanted to go over today, again, uh, I think I have like 35 minutes, 40 minutes? At one point I was told 45, but this is very a very flexible uh, presentation. So today I wanted to introduce myself, go over what I call the recipe, talk about how to put your people in place where they can succeed, the processes that you would develop after you pick your people, and then the tools you can use to help build your social media presence online. So as far as the people, uh, one of the things that you're gonna have a challenge with is uh, getting people motivated to do social media, especially because of the, uh, if you're not a digital native, it's very challenging to get people to jump on the social media. Um, they, they, because they haven't used it, they don't necessarily see a benefit to adopting it. But all the stats, all the research shows, if you're not online, especially on social media, you're going to have a hard time um, continuing your groups or your clubs, right? Because we'll age out. So uh, when you start to form your team, I would recommend. Uh, that you follow this approach where you form your team, you start to collaborate, you develop a culture and processes, and then you get to the point where you actually can, what's called, be performing. It, let's just go over them really quick, right? So when you, we talk about uh, team building, you might want to have multiple people, right? At least have an editor. There's a lot of clubs that have like an army of one. There's only one person doing all the social media. Um, but ideally, you have somebody, you know, being an editor that doesn't necessarily write the articles or the posts, but simply reviews them. One of the challenges is if you write it and read it, especially the day of, you're going to put all these mistakes in there. You're going to read things that aren't there, see things that you should be there, um, and it's just going to get really convoluted. 
Ideally, you'd have a person for each social media platform, or you would assign somebody to post to them for you, right? But if you're gonna have, and it may be the case in your group, that you're the only person doing this, right? I'm talking about what we really wanna get to the stage of is becoming a leader, training the next leader, and then that leader training the next leader, right? Because if you just train one leader and that leader can't train the next person, it, it's one generation and then it's done, right? So, I've had trouble with the team building, uh, with interns, uh, with members of the Rotary, with even, even the uh, community. This is not about team building, but it actually is foundational, so I would definitely spend time um, doing the Rotary method right, not just doing a general announcement in the club, but specifically asking talented members that are related vocations to help you with your projects or your social media posts. I have had uh, almost zero luck every time I do a general announcement. When I typically approach a person and then they say yes, we'll talk about a publishing calendar later, but one of the things too is when you start approaching people to join your teams or your committees, it's don't overwhelm them, right? Just start off with the basic stuff and try to make it as fun as you can. And then also, um, I'd also cross promote, right? So ask if they have a handle on LinkedIn or a business account, right? So my idea is so that you write like, by Peter Fortuna and then your Facebook or your website or your dry cleaning or whatever to build momentum and show your vocational skills along with the rotary stuff, right? Because I think you'll get more buy-in and investment if you can promote their companies or their skills. Again, this is a, the, the hardest part, right? That's what we're kind of starting off first. Everything you build off of this is basically off of your team. So once you pick your team, try to remain positive and polite um, because a lot of your members might get anxious, uh, especially with IT. It's completely nerve-wracking to do IT stuff. Like right now, uh, thank God Mark had the adapter, right? I had an adapter, didn't work. I usually carry two phones, right? Because one phone doesn't work. Today, I was worried about not having internet, right? So I brought two phones. The internet here works, but because it's a school, it's blocking the social media sites. So earlier when I was in the other room, the big room, yeah, <laughs> this is why it's so nerve wracking, right? And you just gotta get over it because until you get used to failing, um, and you're gonna fail. You're gonna be up there, the mic's not gonna work, or your video camera's not gonna work, or here, I'm doing a social media presentation and I can't easily get to the social media sites. So when you go and you do conventions or you hold your clubs, you may want to visit the site first to see what they have, right, in the presentation so that when you're doing your social media, you can actually connect to the internet and do it. Um, I have a form over here, right, that's in the front of, of the login, and it has our social media links and everything on there, right? So while the event is going on, if you go right now to Rotary District 5230 online, you'll already see about 50 pictures up there, a couple of videos um, that are slowly loading because the internet's so bad here, but that's the general idea is, even me that I do it at work, I still get nervous, I still get excited, I still break into the sweat when I have to present because I know how technology and social media is, right? Ideally, what you really want is to reduce this stress, and so when we get to the tools and the process section, we'll show you how to reduce the stress for yourself and the team. The last two stages of your team forming are it's called norming and performing. So now norming is where you get over the conflicts, right? A lot of times people um, love Rotary and they become personally invested in like the website or the bulletin or taking pictures or being the greeter, right? And if you start doing this stuff, you're gonna open up collaboration so you're gonna have to get over uh, the silos you know, the, uh, the egos and that kind of stuff that develop, right? A lot of us are business owners, a lot of you guys are successful, and to learn new things and then have to collaborate with other people to learn new things can be very challenging. So, again, if you're an army of one, not that big of a deal, but if you're two or three or more, 
you're going to go through these phases. And then the last one, uh, I think very key, is that you respect the authority of the club president and who they put in um, charge of the different accounts. And not to challenge that, but to work with them, the district level and, and even the higher the zone levels. Because uh, again, it can become problematic if you don't start to create a structure and a culture as you're developing your team. Which we really want to get to, and I have done this very few times, right? I think the performing part is where it's almost autopilot, right? Somebody leaves the club, a new officer comes in, the email addresses get changed over, no problem. The passwords get sent over, no problem. There's the bulletin on a regular post, no problem, right? That's where it's performing. Most of the time, groups don't get here, okay? So if you have that challenge, uh, you just gotta keep plugging away and hopefully over time you can get to the performing stage. It's very, very challenging to get to that stage, especially with IT stuff. And then you're doing what's called like cross-functional teams. You're gonna be working with all the different avenues of service. You might work with the district or zones. Different leadership, different styles, right? So to develop a culture at that level is even harder. So as you start to get to this stage, it, in theory, it should be easier to delegate, hey, we have an event at uh, Monterey, go down there, um, do social media stuff, your club sends you, or hey, we have a weekly meeting. You show up and you take your pictures, you don't have to worry about the reporter who's gonna document the event and do the details, right? You're not gonna be worried about the picture that you took and send it to your, your club because whoever you send it to is gonna post it for you. That's where you want to get. Very few people, very few companies get here. Most of them are a constant state of chaos, which is normal. Uh, enjoy the ride, that's all I can say. So this is, again, probably the hardest part is getting the people together and organized. The next stuff is almost the easier stuff because it's tools, right? There's no, um, talking back, right? You might get mad at your device, you might get upset, you might cuss it out or whatever, but it's not gonna you know, give, you, give you lip back or push you back, right? When you get to the tools, what everyone always thinks about is just the social media platform accounts. That's like step one, right? You can have all the accounts you want, but if you don't have a process to support it, it's gonna get frustrating, right? If you're doing it by yourself, these other, um, bubbles here are again not so challenging because you're doing everything but if you're working with teams two or more three people these other types of tools you're going to want to look at and they're called collaboration software right we all know the term uh, i think uh, social media it's traditional platforms right facebook instagram linkedin twitter and youtube Right? You can basically make a club account with those four platforms, or five platforms. YouTube, I mean sorry, LinkedIn recently, the last couple of years, started doing similar things like Facebook and doing LinkedIn pages for businesses. LinkedIn is, in my opinion, maybe where we want to look for because we're vocationally based, business based, you know, that kind of thing. Research basically shows that um, Instagram and Facebook are still the ones that most people are on. LinkedIn is definitely more professional. Twitter um, it has mixed results. It's not as impactful as before. Um, and they changed it a lot. So in the last couple of years, they've expanded the amount of writing you can put in the tweets. And that kind of makes it com uh, competitive to Instagram. Since Instagram is more photo-based and people are more visual for the most part, uh, Instagram has kind of gone up as far as um, the impact on your posts. I would still say use a Twitter account, use LinkedIn, and use YouTube when you get the ability to create videos. But the easiest ones to focus on in the beginning are probably the top two, three, and the fourth one. Most people use Twitter, though, for like almost like a newscast Right? I'm here at the event. It just started. Now the speaker's up. Now they're doing pledge of allegiance. Now they're gonna sing. It's almost 
kind of like a, a news reporting thing. Whereas Instagram, again, is more visuals. They have now what's called stories. But whatever accounts you choose, again, this is just like the start. Does everyone have all these accounts, or at least one of them? And which ones are you finding that you're getting the most return for your, your post? Do you guys know how to do analytics on your posts? Okay. So these are way more advanced, so let's keep to the basics then. So right now, the Facebook account, one thing that I definitely wanna show you guys because is basically how to uh, invite or share your events with the district so that your events show up on the district event page. This is, so this is the problem. So I'm connected right now <coughs> to the school internet and the school internet blocks Facebook. So let me see if I can, I can turn my hotspot on. Yeah, let me see, I have a hotspot too, but in the cafeteria, I wasn't able to get it to work. This is your classroom. Yeah, well, the, it's because of the cell towers, and so my cell tower isn't, wasn't strong here. Well, I thought they just wanted to try to compare on study. No, they do. <laughs> And if I wanted to get all fancy, I, I, I would talk about setting the VPN and going around that, but I don't want to expose my... So that's my internet, it showed up. Well, let's see if I can connect. Go ahead and hang. Yeah. Okay, well, the, the you want to grab my hotspot? Yeah, sure. See if you can find, uh, I think it's under cybernets. Tim Schick sold that one. Computer capital C. Hold on. C. Computers is the word. They spell with Z. Oh, Z. So capital C. Capital C. And then and the word is computer. Okay. With the ends with a Z. So this is one of the standard platforms for Facebook. This is my personal account, right? I, you have to log in, you have to have a personal Facebook account, but that's not really what you want to do. You don't want to create a profile for your Rotary Club. You want to create a Facebook page for your Rotary Club. Does everyone have a Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the Facebook page. So this is my Facebook page for me. So I have my personal, my Facebook page for Rotary, my personal page for North Fresno Rotary, a couple of the clubs that work at Fresno State, and a couple of community groups, right? to separate my profiles and my accounts, right? So that's also why I have two phones. One's business, one's personal. I do, I've done litigation work in the past and you don't wanna surrender your personal phone when they're looking for stuff, right? So I have multiple accounts. Here is my personal one and if you look down here, one of the things that I wanted to show is that 
These events here are created by North Fresno Rotary, Fresno State, and other people, but they're shown up on my page. When you guys create events, a really good thing to do on the Facebook stuff is to create your account, and then here, oftentimes, if you type in a location and it recognizes the uh, that it has an account, it might automatically find the account. So for instance here, I'm doing a, a location, but it's noticed that that location is tied to a Facebook account. So it puts uh, Fresno State as a location and then asks, do you wanna add Fresno State as a co-host? So I say yes. And then you, when Fresno State logs in, they will see that they have an invite for me to co-host the event. I don't have access to that account, right? So they have to approve it. This one I do because it's a rotary, right? So I'm gonna add another one down here. You could have multiple people. So I'm gonna add North Fresno Rotary. And this alone will increase your uh, impact on your post because now it's getting shared on two different pages your page and then the district page and then other clubs when they see it they can add your post to their page so now i'm going to go to north fresno rotary i'm going to north fresno rotary events and there's my test so that alone will improve your events on Facebook. So that's like one thing you can take away today. All you have to do is invite District 5230 to your events. And now every Rotary Club that likes our page will be able to see it, right? So for instance, at Fresno State, I have one post have 3,000 impressions. That means 3,000 people, not just browsed over, but they sat down and watched this video, right? The highest, yeah, the highest one on uh, District 5230, I think it's 837, but that was like checked like two weeks ago. So chances are it's over a thousand views already. Did you have a question? No, yeah. So um, I have an event coming up then, and I tried inviting people, my friends, families, stuff, but I don't know, I have my limit, I have my limit. Yeah. Are you saying that if I invite a group like District 5230, I can reach all people on District 5230? You're not inviting a group. It only actually I don't know if it works in groups because some groups are private. Mm -hmm. But what I did is I I add I went to the specific co-host field. So let me go back. So I click create event and I'm gonna have an article posted up on my site. Um, so if you look at this, if you go to the front, take a picture of these papers, there's about 20 or 30 of them in the cafeteria. Uh, my personal website is me, uh, peterfortuna.com slash CTA 2019. And all this stuff will be up there for you. But for your question on how do you invite people, you create an event and you scroll down and you can do it two ways. Adding them by the location or going to the very bottom here where it says co-host and um, adding them here. One thing you may have an issue with, right? So if I start typing in here and this doesn't pop up, so that doesn't pop up, the Rotary District 5230, it's because you didn't like Rotary District 5230. So before you get to this stage, you have to like the page, okay? We'll see it if, if they have their stick. So I can limit my Facebook feed, right, that wall thing, a little bit, and Facebook is constantly changing it. Uh, but in theory, if, if I'm interested in a, in, a, in a club, right, so like over here, uh, here's Staff Assembly. So I, I run this site too for Fresno State. If I'm, if I'm me, John Doe, and I want to know what's happening at Fresno State, 
I like the page, and then I would just go down here to the events, and that's how they would see it. You're not specifically sending an invite to the district members. You're sending it, and you're basically posting, posting a picture, and but not even just a picture because it's pinned to the event wall. So it's pinned here, but there's different groups. So, right, that's Fresno State, that's Staff Assembly. There's a probably meet your mentors in here somewhere. Uh, the, the library, right? Those are Save Mark Center. These are locations, but they also have Facebook accounts. So see how I liked it? Okay. So that's one way of dramatically improving or using Facebook uh, that you could take away today. Um, Instagram. Instagram's kind of picked up a lot of momentum in the last few um, years, and it's a powerful platform. Depending on, well, your device now can support multiple accounts, right? So when you log into Instagram, you can have multiple users on your phones. One thing that's bad, uh, challenging that a lot of people get frustrated with Instagram is that they don't want you to use your desktop. So. Why? Because they want the average person to feel comfortable taking pictures and not have to compete with like you know cameras like that or professionals. So they want you to take it with your cell phone, that kind of stuff. There's workarounds, right, to doing it. Um, so ideally, what I would love to do is download my pictures on my desktop, use a photo editor to clean them up, and then post them up. I can do that, but I have to do two extra steps. I have to basically sync my phone, edit them, put them back in my phone, and upload them. Or I can use questionable apps, which I don't like to use because they access my account and who knows who made them. I am already fearful enough using apps on my cell phone. I don't want to use an unknown app on my desktop with all my other stuff on it. But now what they recommend is um, not just posting to your wall, but using the stories. And I don't have the ability to, uh, my dock camera broke, or I would have this little thing here I could show you on the screen. Um, but there's there's different apps on your window one, on your window machine. Uh, they'll have you install this app called Instagram, but you can't add pictures to it. What I often do sometimes though is I do something quick and dirty. I'll put the pictures up here with no comments and then go to my desktop and type it out, right? Because it's a little faster. Um, and they have, instead of having to use the little keyboard. But this is an app for your Windows machine that you can access and rate and view the Instagram feeds, but you can't post to it. Not yet anyway. It's, it's by design. Uh, they want you to take your pictures um, with your device. Yes? So can you connect to Twitter, to yeah. your, uh, Instagram, yep. and website, to your Facebook page? When you post on one, you post on all of them? Yeah, so when we get in a second to the tools, we'll talk about publishing calendars. And what you really kind of want to do is because the platforms have different strengths and weaknesses, you kind of want to uh, maybe sketch it on paper right and then have different either tables or excel columns where you fill the, the, the same message but slightly uh, written different so you can also include the different um, related social media accounts or hashtags so if you're very lucky all your social media handles which are your usernames are the same but chances are they're not right so if you try to copy and paste the same message without thinking to every account, it's going to mess things up. Because they're going to look for an account that's not there, they're gonna, you know what I mean? So you have to, when we get to the tools, you'll see why. But, uh, so we, I started this page not too long ago, but we already have 200 followers. Um, so again, Instagram grew faster than the Facebook. I took over Facebook and it had like 140 something, I think. Now we almost have 900, but this is a relatively new account, and it already has 200, because most people are using Instagram and Facebook. 
but most people don't like liking pages on Facebook because it floods their wall. That's one of the biggest complaints. And then if you start posting too much or wrong times, they set the settings so that they don't see your posts. Right? So it's not even just post, 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 post. If you do that, you become a, a nag, right? Because if, if I'm sitting down at six o'clock and all of a sudden I see 15 of your posts at once, you took over my wall and most people, especially the younger ones, get very upset with that. It's psychological, I don't know why, but that's what the setters are showing, right? So that's why they seem to like uh, Instagram, and then Instagram also has the ability to uh, do what are called Instagram stories, and they love those because those are a minute videos. Or have you heard of Boomerang? Yeah. Yeah. So those are short, short videos. So here's the thing about uh, the stories on Instagram. It basically allows you, once you start to use uh, these stories, you can then put highlights, almost like commercials across the top. What's a story? A story is just a post, but it lasts only for a certain amount of time. So it builds, there's so much psychology in all this software. So like if you study game psychology, the bells, the whistles, the colors, they program people who play the games to want to click buttons. So Instagram is a turn, found out, like Twitter and all these other accounts, that if you put pressure on people to go view your account so it won't disappear, they will actively go look for it because they don't want to miss out. And that's the Instagram story, and there's something similar to Twitter. And it's, it, it does work. Um, so across the top, you'll see on your apps right here uh, an Instagram story profile on the, on the app. I'm, I'm, I'm online so it looks different. This is a mobile application. They really want you to use your cell phone and not the desktop. That is a business choice. There's no reason for them to do it that way other than that's what they want to do. Um, but again, using the stories applies pressure for them to view it, and it kicks up your what's called your impressions, your impact, your analytics on your social media sites. So LinkedIn just came out with some uh, features that are very similar. <coughs> and this one is a little. Um, I'm, I just we just started this one uh, a little while ago, maybe two or three weeks ago. Um, so six visitors, this is it on LinkedIn, and so we're going to start sharing here. But see how it allows you to track? So we only started maybe 12, 15 days ago, but we already have four uh, followers. How you create it is you click uh, the menu bar, your profile. And then you scroll to the bottom, and it says right here, you can create a company, job posting and such here. But again, Google's your friend, so what I would jot down is how to search how to create a LinkedIn business account, right? In Facebook terms, it's a Facebook page, but LinkedIn calls it a business account or business profile. So now we've already gotten through three tools, and it's getting a little overwhelming, right? One of the first questions was, can I share my posts across the different platforms? The answer is yes, but I would massage them first, right? The last one that I just wanted to bring up in case people haven't used it is Twitter. Um, mine, mine are here, so I've had this one for a while, um, but I don't push it because I, when I'm at the event, I'm taking the picture. I don't, when we get to the publishing calendar, I'll show you how I should do it, but I don't, right? Because I'm an army of one, and I don't have the time to do it uh, the proper way right now. Uh, just being honest, right? But here's your, your Facebook, I'm sorry, your Twitter account. And on the Twitter, now they call them moments. It's the same Coke, Pepsi, Sprite, 7-Up, uh, but it's just a different um, term, 
but it's the same thing. On these moments, you can, you can create chains of tweets or a little video and then post it. And again, it, it, it has bigger impact because of the time um, pressure that people feel for it. It's great now, too, because Twitter allows you to post from your desktop. And then now Twitter also allows you to post multiple photos. In the past, it was only just one or two photos. Now you can post more photos. Um, so this was a recent visitor to North Fresno Rotary. So I just uploaded a picture. All of them now have this ability, which is kind of brand new. And of course, now that I want to demo it's not showing up. Um, but now there's accessibility. So what I'm looking for, it should pop up with this little um, box, right? And you click on it and it allows you to do a description of the picture, which allows Rotary um, to basically even increase their impact because now you're getting visually impaired people. I'm gonna add another photo to see if it pops up. It might be because it, the it's a it's an additional level of code, uh, so it might be the slow internet connections not letting it pop up. But right here, it would also say, do you want to add a, a description for the photos? And that's where you could click in and add again a helpful post for visually impaired people. The, all the platforms have it now. So yeah, see right here, that's what Twitter should do. And so I would, I, I personally want Rotary to start to um, create accessibility for everyone. I don't know if you just saw, but our ice rink in Fresno is just getting sued right now because uh, they had birthday parties and two different parties, and both parties had uh, wheelchair-bound children, and the ice rink wouldn't let them go on the ice to participate in the birthday event. So they forced them to, to remain on the carpeted area, and now that ice rink is getting sued by two different groups. I have a part-time job at uh, GB3, at the fitness center, right? If you go to GB3 now, you'll see all of these accessibility signs. And if you go in, you'll notice that he's changed a lot of the equipment and the desks to allow for accessibility, because he got in trouble too, right? So this is growing, and um, Eventually, anyone that gets federal or state money, you will have to have accessibility. That's why Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn built in this feature now, because everyone's gonna get in trouble. The internet, uh, social media is almost becoming like necessary to participate in today's society. Good or bad, I don't, I mean, I'm not gonna get into that, but that's why this is here, but it's a good thing for us because it increases our, our reach. So Facebook and Twitter you can use on your mobile and desktop, and there's different apps for iPhone and Android. Again, I'll give you a little list on that link uh, that you can get later of the different tools you may want to look at. Okay, so now we talked about those kind of tools as far as the platforms. Um, YouTube is a great one, but it requires uh, more work I think because creating a video, like a minute video, you're talking, to, if you're doing it right, at least an hour of like work, at least. And then if you're gonna do the accessibility, or you make it captioning, you're talking about two, maybe three hours. 